What's going on? Thanks for checking in. I have the one and only AJ Andrews with us today, Gold Glover. She's gonna show us an inside look at some of the outfield drills that allowed her to be one of the best outfielders to ever play the game. And I'm gonna show you a couple weight room exercises that you can implement that's also gonna transfer right over to the softball field. So make sure you stay tuned, check this one out. Today's all about agility. So agility and your hip movements, which are extremely important in the outfield. Be able to have that quick first step, make, make the adjustments you need to make in the outfield to make those amazing catches. We're turning the outfield into a no-fly zone in the grass all day, every day, and this is how it starts. So as AJ said, big part of being an outfielder is the ability for agility and change of direction, right? So what we got here is a four-way kettlebell series to work on that first step, change of direction. So doesn't matter too much about the weight here, but you're gonna need a partner. So the first one, we're working on lateral power. So athletes gonna go ahead and grab the kettlebell by the horns and hold it up. You're gonna lean into your partner. Partner's gonna push them over. They're gonna go into a lateral lunge and then come up. So the harder this partner pushes, right, the more aggressive and the more stretch shortening cycle you're gonna need to use. So stretch shortening cycle is that old school rubber band effect. So the further you go and the faster you go in the negative direction, the more elastic potential the body will have. Hell yeah. So the harder I push, the more force AJ has to accept and redirect back the opposite direction. So when we drop the kettlebell and just use her body weight, she's able to fly up very fast. Just classic overload, underload training. And how we'd be able to transfer that drill that we worked on lateral lunge with the kettlebell to the outfield is this drill. So what we're gonna do is Thomas is gonna push me over to the side, okay? I'm going to have to gather my step and drive off of this leg to then go back and make a catch, okay? So what's gonna happen is in the outfield, we have to make adjustments really quick all the time, whether it be the wind, the spin of the ball, you go one way, you have to ultimately go another way oftentimes, okay? Being able to have those quick adjustments, be able to move that body quickly with mobility is how you make amazing catches in the outfield. So. This is amazing where we're gonna translate it. Here we go. Just did lateral, now this next one is working in on a ball. So I'm gonna push her in the negative direction backwards and she's gonna go into a reverse lunge and come up squeezing the glute and hamstrings back to neutral. So go ahead, we'll hold it by the horns. AJ's gonna lean forward into me and I'm gonna press her back into a reverse lunge, yep. Back down, come up. We'll do two more, one more, come up. Good, back, come up, two. Three, good. Now we'll drop it. Now if we do body weight, right, you're gonna fly up. One, two, three. Other side. Good. One, two, three, good. All right, and how we're gonna work this into amazing outfield work is when we're going up, going forward towards the ball, right? We wanna use as much power whether we're trying to get a ground ball to make an amazing throw home because you need to utilize all your power. You wanna gather as much momentum as possible in order to make a nice hard throw to use all of your body as well as trying to make a catch on the run. When you're sprinting forward and you're trying to make a catch, whether it's a diving play forward or just one on your feet, you have to have as much power and that first step going forward in order to get to that ball. So we're gonna show you what it looks like, a ball on the ground as well as making a catch on the run, okay? Picked a bad day to wear a sweatsuit there, AJ, huh? It's Florida, any day would be a bad day, huh? It didn't work unless you're out of breath, baby. And that I am. Thanks, Jay. This next series, we're gonna do a hip flip drill, but first we're gonna utilize a band for overload, underload training. 
So we're gonna overload the movement while partner's gonna hold the band. Then we're gonna take it off and go to a more sport specific position. Bands are always good when you're doing acceleration training because it naturally puts you in proper acceleration angles. So she's able to throw her chest down before here when she gets to the cone. If she doesn't have the band, it's harder for her to make that point because gravity is gonna to wanna to bring us up. So with the band, she's just able to get in better acceleration positions. All right, so for those that need it broken down in simpler terms like me, essentially what we're doing is having some resistance in order to feel ourselves really explode. Sometimes when you're here, you're trying to push off, you feel like you went really hard, but ultimately you don't know if you went as hard as you possibly could. Now with the band, you have someone's pulling it for you. When you're driving out, hip switching, okay, and then you feel yourself drive out, you can feel how hard you went, how hard you can still go. That allows you when the band drops to go as hard as possible and have as much explosive power to get to that ball. Good. And drive out as hard as you can, baby. So now what's gonna happen is in the outfield, you don't know where the ball is gonna be hit, right? You're in the outfield, you're ready to go. You got to stay moving. A lot of outfielders, you see they're here, right? And then they get into a step as soon as the pitch goes, right? Because we wanna be prepared, we wanna be ready in a good motion, but you don't wanna be stagnant. You wanna be here just waiting for the ball. You wanna be nice and moving, have your feet relaxed, getting ready to go, okay? So here, we're doing a hip switch for mobility, but also make sure our body's still moving. And then your partner is gonna, as we're hip switching, he's gonna point to a side, he or she's gonna point to a side. And that's the, the side that you have to drop step to get to that ball, okay? So we're drop stepping as hard and explosive as possible. One thing I wanna point out, when I do a drop step, okay? Now I'm not saying it's right or wrong, everybody does it different, whatever works for you. What works for me though is you have a little gather step, okay? So if you notice I'm here, I'm doing my hip switch, and then when I point to the side, I drive out and go, versus being here and just opening and go. For me, I feel like I have more power, I'm more explosive if I'm able to drive out versus just being here and turning to run, okay? It just takes a little more energy out of you to do that way. I'm not saying you can't be successful, but for me, what I find works the best is being able to drive out, okay, and exploding off that leg for me to feel more explosive. So when you're doing your drop step in this, if you wanna practice that, practice both ways, whatever works best for you. Whether you're here, hip switching, and then just opening and going, okay? Or, right, hip switching, and driving out and going, okay? Try both. Okay, so now we're gonna work in, catch the ball. Heck yeah. Next, we're breaking out the good old fashioned ladder. So in terms of speed training, a lot of research has shown that there isn't a direct transfer from the speed ladder over to actual speed training, but what it is good for is programming footwork. And in the outfield, as AJ mentioned, footwork is king. So today we're just gonna do the classic- queen. What? Footwork is queen. Footwork is queen. So today she's gonna take us through some ladder drills and then transfer it over, throwing a ball, having her react. Go ahead, take it away. You know the deal. You know the drill. You know how it feels. Okay. So when it comes to doing the lateral drills, I like to do everything that's going to apply to being in the outfield. And right now we're working on our hip flips. Okay, so we talk about head flip, hip flips, being able to really be as agile as possible to make those quick adjustments in the outfield depending on where the ball is going. Let's say you missed wrong or you read the ball wrong, now you have to switch positions or switch directions and or the ball is tailing, then again you have to switch again. So really being able to be prepared for anything in the outfield. So what we're gonna do is cross over icky shuffle for this one. This is really working that hip, okay? You've seen some people that are able to switch as quick as possible, and you see some that are a little slow, okay? It's gonna help you work on your hip flips and be able to move as quickly as you can. So for here, okay, we're gonna cross this way, okay, out. Each time the foot is switching in, okay? You see our hips are moving, each foot going in each square. Cross over, icky shuffle, okay? Now to speed that up, what it looks like here. And then we're going out, trying to make a catch. Let's do it. Prepare for anything in the outfield. The outfield is a no-fly zone. All day, every day, how we make it happen, this is the way. My rhyming is superb.
lateral movements, agility, hip mobility, being able to get quickly to the ball and explosive to the ball. That's what we worked on today. And that is how we're gonna work going cone to cone, ladder to ladder, making the outfield a no-fly zone. Catch you next time. Game rewards are grinded, knows how much you